Good afternoon, Good afternoon everyone. everyone. Welcome, Welcome to, to DevConf Check. Check. I am Rajin Uman. I am Navin Neshinde. We are part of Developer, Developer Experience, Experience Engineering, Engineering Team in Red Hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I would like to start with this quote. In 2011, Mark Anderson quoted this in the Wall Street Journal. He states that software is still eating the world. So basically, his idea was like, day by day, our daily problems are getting solved within the softwares. Everything is getting resolved within a software ecosystem. <laughs> yeah. So there are a lot of innovations which are happening right now in the industry, like ChatGPT, e-commerce applications, a lot of things which are happening right now. So how are we managing this? How are we managing this innovation in an engineering perspective? Innovation is good all the time, but how are we managing as an engineer? Managing the innovation means, are you, going, are, you, are you able to track the good things in the terms of good practices and all? So basically my point is, Every day, that whenever the new innovation happens, like the stack is always the problem stack is just getting more complex day by day, and like in an engineering perspective, software onboarding, the collaboration, uh, management, everything seems to be different day by day nowadays. So uh, it is good that we should we should resolve this kind of things. Actually, there are a lot of problems which are coming right now. You can see some collage on my uh, screen. In the collage, I have tried to address some of the problems which I come in my mind in an engineering perspective. When you develop a software, deliver a software, managing a software, a lot of problems will come to you. Some of the problems I have addressed here, like for example, consolidation of the efforts. That's a major thing. So something can be the management, something can be the templatization, better software, effort, software management. A lot of problems are coming in the picture. So, in the current scenario, many organizations want to achieve more with the, uh, in the rapid delivery model with the less resources. That's a lifestyle which we are into. Who is going to take care of us? Is someone? Okay. So basically in our, uh, basically in the engineering perspective, so as an engineer, I have to develop some feature or uh, I have to build some code and deliver it to the production and I have to ma effect manage it effectively. That's the basic fundamentals of an engineer, like how to do the things in a better way. So engineers are actually struggling to make the things uh, into, uh, engineers are actually struggling to make, uh, meet the technical depths, features and everything, but we are not getting the right time. So these are some of the problems which we are trying to address here right now. And this is actually leading to us right now. We know everything. As a developer, I am developing the applications. I am maintaining it. I am putting it into production. But that is not the supposed job of mine. It is supposed job of a DevOps or a system administrator who are manages infrastructure. I am getting. I am getting the. I am. I am being the jack of everything, but I am not being the master of anything, or, or in an engineering perspective. I am working on everything right now but I'm not a master of anything. That's a primary problem for the developers now. So do we have a focused solution which we can see every efforts in one place? Yeah, that is Backstage. So Backstage is a open platform for building the developer portals, which is homegrown in Spotify as an internal tool and it has open sourced in 2020 and it is donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Spotify enables the developers, engineers, managers, whatever the profile is, like what you will get to know the insights that what is happening in your organization in a consolidated view. And it has a huge community uh, uh, base also in, across the world. This, this approach actually easified the life of the Spotify. Spotify has almost 1,000 plus microservices and the software uh, pieces across the, scattered across the, uh, their in, uh, organization. But the, with the backstage, they were able to handle it. So this developer portal enablement helps them to track every pieces of the software uh, which are scattered and everything into a one single view. 
I told you the developer portal. What is developer portal? Developer portal is nothing but an internet for the de developers, and it is a one single front end for the for our organization to handle all of our services or the or our software stacks. So it it unifies your toolings and it unifies your toolings, services, softwares, everything into a single stack. So a developer portal primarily integrate the tooling, uh, services, and the documentation also, which is a pain for uh, us to manage. Uh, also, we will get to know that like who owns what. Like we will get to know the, some insights on the like who is taking care of what. So there are a lot of insights we will get after connecting the backstage uh, with our software cat, uh, software ecosystem. So uh, so that we can give some time to our developers. That okay, you focus on building some feature. Uh, we can track everything in one place. Like if so something goes down or something goes there, like we'll be able to track everything. So we can f we can make our developers to work on in a focused mode. Yeah, backstage actually enables the better collaboration, and it unlocks collective potential and empowers team to do what they to do best with the speed and the scale and house control. So backstage will really helps you to deliver your software and the manage the software in a Gold, with the golden path practices. So backstage is, it aligns the distributed culture of an organization uh, and, it, and it will help you bringing all together into a single platform. Yeah. The core philosophy of backstage is actually, it acts as an interface to unify the things all together. I have mentioned this before actually. So, it is. It helps to build. It helps. It helps you build the uh, single source of truth for your organization, and it will keep up your autonomy in your software stack. Like autonomy means like different software, different enterprises works in a different model. So it, within relation to that, you you will be able to see that how your software stack should be set up over there. Like you will get some insights over there right at that moment. So and regarding the ownership you'll be able to uh, set up the ownership for your backstage components. For example, uh, if I have a front end and uh, he owns the back end, for the front end, I can set up the ownership for myself. For the back end, I can set up the ownership for himself. So we'll, can, so we'll be able to track that, like who owns what. Also, this empowers the responsible software development ecosystem also. Let's uh, go through the three uh, core terminology of the backstage, which is core app and plugins. Core is something like a, how the kernel is for the uh, Linux. So with the core, like it is maintained at the Spotify. So it powers the basic functionality for the backstage. App is something like we do a, something like we do a Linux installation in our machine, how it helps in our day-to-day -day activities. So app will, app is just an instance of backstage which is deployed and we can, we can tweak according to your uh, needs actually. Plugins is a cool feature of the backstage that we can extend, we can give the, we can give the extensibility to your uh, code. So, the, for, for, so for the enterprises, we can adopt the backstage in their own manner. Yeah, backstage actually helps you to, uh, three, uh, to, to create, manage and explore the things. Creating means that you can build your software stack in an effective way. You can manage your software stack in a uh, one centralized location, and you'll be able to connect the pieces across it. So con by connecting means that like your data is shared across the organization, so that the discoverability of your tools and services will be huge. So software model. Talking about the software model. So this is a way where we classify our software components into one. So so. Uh, in the core entity, we are trying to classify our software, right? How our front-end system should work like, how our back-end system should work like. So we are classifying it uh, into our, like how we are uh, classifying into our software system like that now. So, Regarding to that, also there are many relationships also we can be able to manage. Like you can relate your software one component to another component, how it talks. So for example, I have a backend system, I provide an API, so we can build the relations on top of that. 
also we will be able to use the uh, annotations to will we can use the annotations to uh, extend the backstage actually so it uses the kubernetes uh, it uses the kubernetes format to uh, define the annotation so it will helps to uh, extend your backstage with the and use the plugins also so it is uh, it is a very good thing one one pro one thing we can do with the backstage is like with the docs so docs is always a main problem for the developers so uh, managing the documentation for example if i am an engineer if i want to uh, find the technical docs user docs like i have to go to multiple places and the multiple resources so right now uh, with the power of the backstage we'll be able to uh, with the power of the backstage we'll be able to find everything in the one place with the power of the tech docs actually uh, and you can you can manage your content in the terms of markdown and you can able to find your services with the power of the search search uh, will be able to do your search will be able to uh, search will be able to make sure that your content is shared in the back, uh, backstage environment so it is discoverable basically yeah search itself search it will helps you find out the content so with the search by default it is a memory search in a mechanism so it is able to connect the software pieces across the system if you search for a software template you will get it if you search for a documentation associated with a software template you will get it so it's already there so, uh, and good part of that is it by default it has an in memory search but also it supports elastic search lunar and postgres as their back end search engines and and this is suggested for the higher level usage actually in memory is not a good uh, in memory is not a good search mechanism in the terms of a large scale usage so switching to the search engines makes sense actually and it makes help us to communicate within the service to service plugins and you can customize your search experience to your people yeah i'm handing over to navinya thanks rajan so uh, i will walk you through software templates and backstage so all of us are aware of this famous quote uh, which is time is money and do you really want your developers time uh, to spend time building the same old boiler like developing the same old boilerplate code every time they want to create a new application no right so for this uh, and with the advent of microservices every team has uh, an autonomy to choose the solution which they like and which fits their purpose for someone it might be java for someone it might be node js so teams have got this uh, independent uh, decision on what they want to work on to s but this creates a problem uh, called as distributed uh, fragmentation of developer tooling because uh, someone might be working on java someone might be working on node js so there is no common developer tooling and the only way you can know uh, like how the developer tooling is set up is to speak with your colleague so backstage addresses this challenge uh, with software templates or golden paths golden path is nothing but an opinionated and supported path for developing your applications with golden paths uh, you can bootstrap your project ideas quickly by following standard practices like clean architecture so golden paths are not meant to restrict or limit any developers they are rather meant to be complementary complementary to developers so that they can do what they do best like develop applications golden paths also allow to automate the creation of gitlab ci cd pipelines and temp, temp, deployment templates of openshift and kubernetes so on slide uh, i have included few links to uh, golden path templates which are available from backstage as well as janus idp janus idp is an open source community supported by red hat Uh, it's currently working on backstage so you can check out uh, the golden path templates available on backstage as well as janus idp there are uh, plenty of golden path templates available there like clean architecture react spring boot with helm helm chart deployment now coming to plugins so uh, backstage has this uh, customizable and extensible plugin architecture in software systems uh, there is no one size that fits all every organization has has its unique requirements and uh, it needs a unique solution for that and backstage is really built in a way that it is open for extension by default and plugin provides a way to extend the backstage architecture 
So there are a uh, number of plugins available on Spotify Marketplace. Also, there are uh, some plugins which are provided by Red Hat. And uh, the links to the same is provided in this slide, uh, which is janusidp.io slash plugins. So you can uh, explore all the plugins here. Now, this slide shows an uh, example internal developer uh, architecture of an internal developer platform at an organization. It has variety of plugins like Circle CI for managing your uh, continuous deployment, service catalog to manage uh, all your services at a single place, Lighthouse for your UI application analytics. And uh, it's not necessary that uh, you should use a vendor provided plugin. In Backstage, it's very easy to develop your own plugin. So all of these uh, plugins can be used as a mix and match of variety of uh, plugins. Uh, and you can extend the backstage architecture as per your use case. So I would like to cover this plugin of Motomo. Uh, Motomo is nothing but an open source web analytics platform. So we have developed this uh, plugin in-house at Red Hat and it will soon be available as part of our community plugins in Janus IDP. Now we will like to go through a quick demo of Backstage. So uh, this is a Backstage homepage where you can enable, uh, where you can do all the things right now here. So right now, first of all, I am trying to do is going to show that how to do the software templating and uh, how to bootstrap a software with a golden golden with the golden paths and all. So uh, for software templating is the core of the uh, backstage where you can enable the developers to follow the best practices and everything. Uh, let's see the how we can create a software template. So we have defined a few uh, software templates in the our catalog right now. So I'm using the software templates for the uh, with this a uh, Node.js backed application. So after uh, you can add your organization whatever you need. I can add you can add your repository name yeah, and you can uh, who owns the system here comes the ownership of your uh, code piece actually so you can define the owner for a specific code which is going to bootstrap and you can assign the system where it belongs to also uh, and you can modify the things however you want so basically it, it uses the yml format to declare your software catalog for uh, software catalog uh, for your application and you can define the actions which you need, which you follow. Once you do a create, we can see that uh, software is getting cataloged in this uh, specific group. So I'm doing a live publishing to the software in the catalog. So once you are done with it, you can see the, we can see a new repo has been created just now. Uh, which states that it is, uh, the code has been bootstrapped by the, Hannah said, uh, hi, the backstage. So similarly, also you will be able to track the software in the backstage, which will give the life cycle. We, we can track the life cycle for this specific software piece from the day one. So this is the uh, this is how we can track the and we for ex and if you are ex if you are trying to reconfigure this with the someone else you can also just update the catalog.yml so we'll be able to track everything in the one place. Yeah. So this is a one example of a so software uh, templating, and everything is managed within the catalog. Uh, yeah. So this is a one of the IDP which we use right now, uh, Hana's IDP. HANAS IDP is something which we can utilize uh, for building an IDP. So in the HANAS IDP showcase, this is a showcase app which is available publicly. Uh, it's available in showcase.hanasidp.io. So in the showcase, in the HANAS IDP, we, uh, we have built a plugins for uh, managing our infrastructure, managing our security insights, everything. So Red Hat has a very great community called HANAS. So they manage this right now. So in the, this is a showcase application. I'm trying to show you the plugins which the, the HANAS IDP which has developed recently. So which is one, one is the majority is a topology plugin. Topology plugin is built on the top of the basic uh, native Kubernetes integration on, uh, on the backstage. Backstage has a native Kubernetes integration. On top of that, uh, 
the topology plugin has been built up. So you'll be able to get the insights of an infrastructure and in a one place. For a developer, you don't need to go multiple places to see what is happening. If a port is down, you can see that, like what is the, uh, what is the status of the port, uh, then you can take the action items necessarily. So another plugin is called the Tecton plugin. You will be able to see the Tecton pipelines over here. Uh, another thing is uh, image registry by the Quai. So you'll be able to see that like what is the uh, image which you are using with the backstage uh, with your application. So you can you can see a track record of uh, some image insights over here, and also some security insights. Yeah, at last. And also you can see the, how the system is uh, depicted here actually. How a system is getting related to every, uh, how a system is related to uh, here. If you see that actually, if the showcase app is dependent on what all things. Uh, so you can, you can define the dependencies and you, as a new developer, he or she may be able to understand like how the system works basically. That insight is basically shared. And uh, if something is broken, so we can identify uh, like where this problem can be, uh, is where, where the problem is arise. And this is the documentation for the uh, backstage where tech docs powered. So you can able to manage the documentation uh, in one place right now. So with the documentation, With the documentation, you can manage the doc uh, you can manage the content over here, and this is a searchable piece of software. Even if you see here, you can search that actually. Uh, you can get the guides over here. So it is as much as extensible backstage. There is no limit for this extensibility we can get from this backstage. It's just also it can, it is able to track it is able to track the uh, APIs. It can act serve as your API catalog within your organization, so you can able to find the, like what all APIs which are getting uh, used within your uh, organization. You'll get some insights on that right now. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, I'm handing over to Adhavani. So, uh Currently, Janus IDP is an IDP provided by Red Hat. It is an open source one. Uh, there are also a lot of commercially available versions of IDPs, like uh, Red Hat Developer Hub, which was recently announced at Red Hat Summit. This will soon be available in GA. Uh, we are, there are also Amazon and Rodi, uh, who have built their own IDPs, and they are using Backstage as their central nervous system for managing uh, this IDPs. Next one is, let's say, uh, you have decided to use Backstage as your uh, internet developer platform, and you want to use your IDP, use, uh, create your own IDP using Backstage. What should be the adoption plan? So first step would be trying out uh, Backstage. To try out Backstage, you can use the demo applications which are available on Janus IDP, or you can use a demo application from Spotify as well. The next step would be POC, which would be you set up the Backstage instance on your local environment, and uh, you try out, uh, like you try few uh, configurations, like configure backstage with GitHub or GitLab. The next step is building. Let's say there is some requirement for which backstage is not providing the plugin, or you want to extend backstage there, like we had for Matomo. So you can build your own plugins. So th that is just a small feature where you just try out if backstage is really working for you and if it is the solution you are looking for. If it works for you, then the last step is spread the word, evangelize your adoption plan and extension. So we are welcoming contributors for Janus IDP. You can scan the QR code which is shown on the slide to join the Janus IDP Slack community. We are open for question and answers. Yes. Can you onboard an existing project to Backstage? Yes. yes. You have to just add a uh, YML file, your software descriptor basically, uh, into your existing project. Backstage is able to track from the things from the right away, that moment. Yeah. There is a VS Code extension is also available. Uh, I think that's created by the Spotify. With that extension, you will be able to create the template formatting. You don't need to worry about other technicalities. You can simply onboard the software with that. Yes. 
it's for me it's obvious why it's beneficial for organization, but why it's beneficial for developers to contribute to the So as a developer uh, I'm sorry to step in. Can you uh, yeah, sure. question for yeah. the, the stream? Sure. Uh, the question is uh, how backstage is beneficial for developers? So as a developer, uh, you are a part of an organization and like at Spotify, they have thousand plus microservices. So, but it's shipped as a single product. So we, as a developers, we need to collaborate with multiple teams. Like front end team needs to collaborate with back end. Back end team might need to collaborate with any another service. So every time you can't go looking for who is the owner for this application, what is their API? Uh, how, like, are they providing any swag swagger documentation? So for all of those things, Backstage is providing a single pane of glass, be, be it for developers, be it for managers, or for non-technical folks. I think there are no more. Yes. If there are no any other questions, Okay. Yes. So like one of the best practices of like if you're speaking about Kubernetes is like implementing maybe like our readiness roles, um, who has the limits. So I was wondering if is it possible to put checks inside those pain plates? Yes. So you're you asking that, the question. Uh, you're asking that uh, can we put the custom elements inside a uh, code uh, code repository, right? Yes. Yes. This is completely flexible. So the things which is built on the backstage is in the plugin concept. Even if you feel so like uh, so, it is based on the plugin thing. It is completely customizable. For in the case of software template, uh, you can set. Uh, you can ch ask for this check. This is a custom built form actually, based on the questions which you predefine in your the Kubernetes descriptor file, object descriptor files. It is a YML file. Yeah, so the references of this content of the slide and the things that will be taken from the backstage websites as well as the HANA CDP pages as the credits.